It's my privilege and honor to welcome on stage uh, Dr. Guillermo Umpires. And it's, so, uh, we, we cannot have no other person better than him to have a balanced view. So th welcome so much, sir. So it is. I, I just enjoy it. <laughs> uh, and it's so hard to debate, that's right. And you prepare and you're going to do your best shot. And, and we got amazing stories here. But I think the main story that I got out of here is how we have progressed in the management of diabetes. So after the DCCT, the Diabetes Complication Control Trials, and the UK PDS, that was late 80s, early 90s. So 30 years ago, we only were concentrated on glucose control. That's it. Because those studies show that you reduce glucose, you prevent complications. Then in the early 2000s, we got three amazing trials, the Accord, the Advanced, the VATT, that put a halt in bringing the glucose down because they raised the questions about hypoglycemia and the risk of hypoglycemia with increased cardiovascular complications. And during the last ten, seven, 10 years, we have learned from the cardiovascular outcome trials that they work. Most of the agents like we have been using, metformin, sulfonylureas, they don't really, DPP-4, they don't really reduce the main complications of diabetes that people die, cardiovascular disease and renal disease. And now we have agents, both the GLP-1 and the SGLT-2s, that have been shown to be cardioprotective and renal protective. So we have gone from glucocentric to avoid hypoglycemia to complication-centric. And this is the beauty of these two agents. Now, uh, Dr. Mehta talked to us about the GLP-1 receptor analogs. They talked to us, it showed good data from the cardiovascular outcome trial, reducing uh, cardiovascular complications and mortality. She talked about the parenteral versus the oral GLP-1. Talked to us about the kidney disease prevention or somehow, and the stroke prevention. So perfect, the case is there. GLP-1 are great agents for the management of diabetes. They are injectable, but now we have oral presentations too. Dr. Singh talked to us in a very impressive way to start a debate about the NICE guidelines. And the NICE guidelines doesn't even mention GLP-1 because of restrictions there is in the UK and some of the countries in Europe. Not because the GLP-1 don't work, it's just because the nature of the publicity and policies they are in the UK. And he also talked about the cardiovascular and the heart failure and the renal protection. So, so who won? I don't think there is a winner here. I just think the beauty is to understand how we have progressed from glucocentric to complication-centric, and both agents work very well. So what I take the reading the literature and listen to these two great speakers is that first, glucose control. Ah, there's an edge perhaps on GLP-1. Um, weight management or reduction. Yeah, a little edge on GLP-1s. If you look at atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, I think they are both equal like shown by Dr. Singh. With the respect to heart failure, with respect to renal protection, there's no way, no question to me, that the GLT-2 have an edge over the GLP-1. The cost is unimportant, that's right. So I'm a doctor of poor people, where 30% of my patients have no insurance. And I'm, my understanding is that 98% of the patients here pay out of pocket. So cost is an important consideration in this group of people. So I just have to congratulate both speakers. I think this was a beautiful discussion. Uh, they can debate outside who won, but congratulations to both of you.